Just keep moving. An extrapolative dystopian future of nomadic human habitation. <laughs> I'd like to ask you first. Have you ever wondered what the future would look like? Perhaps what you will be doing in the next 10, 20, 30, 50, 100 years? Or have you ever thought what are the things that you've achieved in life? Now, have you ever thought of what the Earth would look like? Perhaps with all these new technologies, revolutionary architecture, self-driving cars, and vehicles faster than ever before, the future seems like a lovely place to live in. Perhaps you have this vision of the future? Or this? Or if you're really optimistic about it, you'll have something like this. But I'd like to really ask you, in all seriousness though, have you ever thought of what the Earth would really look like? Because I'd like to ask you, have you ever considered or do you have any news on how climate change has been affected uh, our Earth recently? If not, maybe these images would help. This is climate change. This is climate change. This is climate change. While for some, because of the effects of climate change, this is their future, inevitable death. The only environment that we have ever known is changing and is changing fast. Well, there will be more of these natural disasters that humanity will experience. Stronger typhoons, higher floods, longer and harsher droughts, and so on. By 2100, data shows that extreme disasters that happen once in every decade is bound to happen yearly when there are no changes in the projections. And after all the constant forces of nature, prior to the inconsiderate actions of humans, at some point the earth will reach the state of cataclysmic collapse. Funny enough, we humans don't need much. We are actually pretty simple beings in order to survive. According to Maslow's most basic hierarchy um, in the hierarchy of needs, having basic access to food, water, air, and shelter are the four elements that make or break survival. So from the dawn of evolution, humanity has long been known of keeping and finding means to survive, even if it means venturing far beyond the source and into the unknown. But the one thing that evolution nor any generation of humans have removed from our DNA is the eagerness to explore and seek adventure, to look for a new place, new environment, new faces, and new cultures. Thus, this leads to the existence of nomads. These are people who have no fixed residences, but move from place to place, usually seasonally and within a well-defined territory in order to survive. Most nomadic groups follow a fixed or annual seasons. So this illustration basically shows my theoretical framework, wherein the idea of, or the notion of Yegnet, that the theory was sparked on, um, wherein innate connections create spaces based on meanings and experiences and relationships towards other beings. So first is there is mobility, which allows forward movement in seeking for the unknown, adventure, and exploration by losing one identity along the way. As for the essence of dwelling, this allows a home embodiment notion that creates a sense of acceptance and belongingness. So together, this brings the idea of or the sense of familiarity towards the people that you constantly face unfamiliarity with. This then leads to premise three, that the human nature is to preserve and prolong our species. From the idea of fight or flight to survival of the fittest and natural selection, humanity has long been fighting for its place as the highest species and will explore options in moments where humanity is seen on the brink of extinction. The next premise is where humanity explores extraterrestrial human life and all technological researchers, advancements, and developments are catered to develop life on extraterrestrial planets. As for the fifth, humanity will have the interplanetary civilization wherein developments of civilization on the lunar and Martian soil are existing together. Sixth is wherein humans left on Earth will establish a nomadic lifestyle due to adopting and having the capabilities to avoid natural disasters. And seven, with the notion of nomadic lifestyle, this then leads to nomadic architecture that explores mobility capabilities with the integration of climate considerations. So how do we, as architects, designers, thinkers, and design something that is climate resistant, adaptive, easily mobile, very modular, and takes not as much space uh, while allowing a better survivability? So with every possibility of space travel, modern technology, and every green innovation in architecture we can think of, it seems perfectly fine. But what if it's not? 
your future may not be as secure as you think. So now I ask you, if the day comes where the earth reaches its tipping point, where would you be? If you were left on earth for you to survive on your own, what would you do? Well, look no further. I introduce to you the Nomadic Habitation Unit. So again, I'd like to introduce you to the Nomadic Habitation Unit, a fully equipped modular habitation that gives you the edge and increase in survivability changes in this harsh, harsh environment that we live in. The Nomadic Habitation Unit is capable of scaling any terrain and environment you place it in. Its ability to protect you from harsh climates from the hottest areas to the coldest one. It is designed to engage in extreme environments and allow stability in the lives of the occupants. So before we get any further, I'd like to do this to two frameworks that shape the idea of increasing survivability. First is the use of Kate Rowett's donut model, which it will be it will be developed in the study as it dwells into an evolved version of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Um, this framework basically provides essential concepts such as necessities for survival and sustainability of the individual and of the community. And the second is the 70-30 ratio, which we are all familiar of as the 70-30 income generating ratio. Um, but as for this thesis, um, I'd like to introduce this as a survivability ratio, wherein this basically allows the idea of maximizing spaces and configuring them in ideas or manners that allow 70% of each module, unit, and community to maximize at least 70% of its spaces to promote survivability, whether it be for food, for water, for energy or comfort, the use of floors, ceiling, walls, and any surface possible helps maximize the compact spaces into fully operational units. As for the finding, the primary foundation and inspiration of, of is the triangle. As we all know, the triangle are, is the most basic shape and foundation of all for its present of the sides and stable points in the moments that it will be needed to stand. This then leads to making it into a space, but then results to having almost half of the shape be completely unusable in any orientation, unless it was built for the area, which is not ideal as this is a modular typology, which essentially leads, or the proponent, to having the bottom half essentially create a trapezoid and begin proximity studies and agronomic studies. This then leads to three shapes that will be widely used as the main habitation modules in this thesis. This then leads to premise 8, wherein nomadic technologies or nomtech will be the pioneer developers and manufacturers of the nomadic habitation unit. The company will mass produce the NHU for distribution when humans need to shift into nomads. Next is where government gives out base units, or basically where government provides families left on earth with the base unit of nomadic habitation unit. Um, which are basically bought off from nomadic technologies. And lastly, premise 10, wherein as more and more nomadic habitations are distributed, more people modify it for cultural, functional, aesthetic, and security purposes. To start things off, this is the five stages of design development. First stage is wherein listing down all essential components, essential for survival components, and group them as they will be considered to be placed together in spaces and modules. So we would have nutrition, restoration, occupation, elimination, cultivation, filtration, communications, navigation, ventilation, sanitation, collection, foundation, and lastly, mobilization. As for the stage two, ergonomics and proxemics, this is where um, designing ergonomic spaces and proxemic minded is crucial in the nomadic habitation. 
wherein module spaces should be maximized and every corner, wall, floor, ceiling is important. An efficient and affordable living space might be the difference between a crowded and a comfortable one as compared to a comfortable and free flowing space. As Proxemics examines how people interact with these physical surroundings, the idea is where we have adequate personal space to feel at ease. In this sense, with proxemics and agronomics as part of the design considerations. As for stage three, similarly to stage one, but this time, um, the proponent listed all the innovative technologies that will be incorporated in this nomadic habitation unit. Stage four is basically the component design and modular inventions of each unit or each module um, and component that are invested or placed into the module or in the unit itself. And lastly, stage five, we're in the assembly and specifications, modules, adjustable unit railing, railing distance control and motor, um, the railing support, undercarriage components and storage, undercarriage railing, um, unit supports, independent suspension wheels, and unit support with pads. The floor plan of the base unit is in its simplest state wherein modules are simply assigned by the components it houses, where customization of, of configurations and personality of nomadic habitation comes into play. Um, the floor plans may vary according to person or grouping. So first we would have cultivation, nutrition, restoration, coming from, from the entrance at the backside. Then the ventilation, elimination, and communications. And we would have occupation, filtration, and navigation. So as for the triangle module elevation, we would have 1.4 on the short side, um, 2.5 on the long side, and 2.7 as the length. As for the height, um, similar to all modules, it would be 2.8 meters. For the trapezoid module, we would have 1.65 on the short side, uh, 2.65 on the long side, and a 1.3 length as for the trapezoid module, similar to the triangle, we would have 2.8 meters as for the height. And lastly, rectangle model or module, it would have 2.6 by 3 meters and the 2.8 meters in height. So this would be the front and back elevation. Um, they are both at the maximum at 7.8 meters um, in length. As for the side elevations, we would have 7 meters uh, for the overall height and the 17 meters um, for the whole length of the module itself. While for the module height, it would be 2.8 for all module um, in, incorporated in the unit itself and the 14.5 meters having three group modules um, for, the, for this nomadic habitation unit. So what is shown here is a scale of humans inside and outside of the nomadic habitation module as for the section drawings, along with the placement of components and shows um, the nomadic habitation unit in order to illustrate and visual, visualize nomadic living, moving and actively using the spaces in the modules in relation to the environment that is currently settled in. This is then the utilities. So as for the portable, wat portable water, this would be the orange pipes highlighted in the image. For the gray water, for the electrical, and lastly, for the ventilation. As for the exploded drawing, it is essentially the list or um, a visualization of all components found in a base unit together. With its quantity, this allows a habitant, this allows the habitant to see that the modularity and customization is endless, as it can be parted out and eventually developed into different evolutionary components. As for the materiality, we would have graphene coated dynamic glass. Um, as for the structural, we would have generation free steel and enforced with fiber, carbon fiber reinforced polymers. As for the module itself, it would be a carbon fiber nanotube infused ABS thermoplastic, which is easily moldable, which is easily moldable and easily printed. And then glass fiber reinforced plastic and 2DPA-1 coating, which is essentially, 2DPA is essentially a two-dimensional polyamide um, dash one coating, which is in development um, as a plastic that is considered to be stronger 
or stronger as steel. And lastly, you would have shape memory alloys um, for the wheelbase and non-pneumatic all-terrain tires or essentially airless tires for the materials itself. So this then leads to the whole circular economy of the nomadic habitation unit. So we would have thermal harvest, solar harvest, and wind harvest as the three main components that brings out energy towards the whole unit. It would be then brought out to the solid state hydrogen batteries that then powers the water filtration, the heat pump, and the aeroponic system. Coming into the left side first, we would have the water filtration taking in the water source, which then leads to the gray water filtration and water desalination. This then leads to water tanks, which then would lead to the human consumption. Once the human has consumed the water, whether it be for bathing, for cleaning, for washing, or anything, um, the wastewater would then circulate back to gray water filtration and towards a cycle that is continuous. Coming to the right, we would have the aeroponic system, which is um, basically um, a cultivation inside the nomadic habitation unit. So during so during temporary settlements in areas, they would have cultivated drops that can be planted along the surface or on the soil itself. The food produced, whether it be um, directly consumed by humans or the other remaining would be turned into food waste, would then lead towards the digester. The digester would then have two main products, the methane and digestate. Methane would then be directed to PSA or pressure swing absorption where it would separate methane from CO2, where methane would be used as for thermal harvest, and the CO2 will be used for the aeroponic system. The digestate would then be used for aeroponics itself and the cultivated crops. So these are basically different configurations developed, having different numbers and different types of module, allowing multiple configurations depending on the liking of the user. So communities will continue to grow when people become nomads despite their continuously shifting surroundings. Nomads retain a strong sense of belonging. They frequently rely on tight-knit social networks for flexibility and survival. They may have distinct cultural origins, but they all lead similar lives and face the same problems and situations. The community of nomads develop a strong sense of mutual support and solidarity because of their shared ways of existence. This is then community creation organization, wherein the introduction of Kate Rowett's donut model is also seen very evident to be brought out in this scenario. As nomadic habitants from different environments and eventually makes nomadic communities, it fosters the growth of cultural identity while simultaneously fostering melting pots and diasporas. It is possible to think of this as a process of cultural exchange whereby individuals from various backgrounds come together and create traditions, convictions, and customs. This interaction may result in emergence of fresh cultural expressions that bend many influences. As people unite to form new communities in strange places, the growth of melting pots and diasporas can also be considered as a manner of creating communities and social cohesiveness. Overall, the declaration emphasizes the opportunity for cultural growth and interaction brought about by nomadic living and the colonization of uninhabitable areas. So, in conclusion, as much as we don't want an ecological dystopian future, a setting where everything and everyone must be careful and independent, but in the very what-if scenario that projections are correct, then architecture will continue to thrive, will continue to make ways, creating habitable and productive spaces, and create architecture that continue to share the cultures and identity that each and every one of us protests. Thank you and good day.